Okay, welcome to this uh, demo of Resync. Uh, Resync is a tiny library I created. Uh, the motivation behind it was to have an observable on the server and uh, simply subscribe to it from any connect client. Um, I know there's a WebSocket subject class uh, available from RxJS. I just I just found it hard to use, and from from what I understood, anybody on the wire can take the WebSocket subject and not only subscribe to it, but also send to it, and that's that's not what I wanted. Um, so yeah, let's just jump into the demo. I think that's the best way to show what's happening. So um, if you if you check out this um, this package locally, uh, if you clone it, um, and if you go into the demo folder, you have to just basically run yarn or npm install in all three of these folders. These are the, the folders for the demo. So you have the demo server and you have two clients, one for the web and one for Node.js. Uh, so yeah, you, you have to run yarn in all three. Um, and I will just pause until that completes because it takes a minute. So yarn completed on the server, on the client web, and on the client.js folder. Um, so we can uh, start the demo. So of course you first need to start the server. And when you start the server, um, yeah, let's talk about the server uh, while it's starting. So the server is a basic Fastify server. You don't have to use Fastify. Uh, you can use Express, Koa, Happy, whatever you prefer. Um, and therefore the server code is not interesting. The only thing important here is that you add a WebSocket listener, um, and the WebSocket listener is where the, 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 the magic happens. So for the first demo, we have a, you know, we're importing recent of course, creating an instance, and then we create a subject, and we have to register that subject with the recent. So we have to add it, to, and we have to give it a, a name because, you know, the clients that, that want to subscribe to it need to know uh, what to subscribe to. And the only thing left is that in your uh, on message listener, you add the processing of, of that message to resync. So you allow resync to consume the message. And the only thing kind of um, potentially weird here is that you have to give it, you have to tell resync not only what the message is, but also what the send method is. So resync can use this method to respond. In this case, it can use the method actually to send the next messages to uh, subscribers, to clients subscribe to it. Um, the send method, send method needs to be bound to the, the parent socket. Uh, and that's it, that's it on the server. So you have a subject in your consuming messages, and that is literally it. Um, and as you can see right now, it's printing here on the server that what, what it is doing. So let's uh, first look at the Node.js um, observer uh, example. So um, actually, I have to go there. Give me a second. So if I go there and open the client, right. So the observer um, code, which I'm going to actually run here, uh, connects to the WebSocket, subscribes, and now it's receiving the messages. And you can compare them, 767, 767, so um, These messages are generated on the server with a dummy um, sender. So I'm literally in each step, I'm, I'm generating a, a random interval between half a second and four and a half seconds. I just picked those numbers, don't ask me why. And you can see exactly what's happening. So each time it's sending whatever the interval was before the last, um, since the last message, sorry. And what the you know, new tech time step is, that's all it's sending. And as you can see, of course, if the value here is high, it took a bit more time, the, 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 the small values work quick because that's the interval in which it sends. 
Uh, so that's that's how the messages are generated and sent, and you can see them here, 446, 446, on the messages that are, are, are coming through and the, the, the client is subscribed to it. So how does that work on the client? Um, it connects to a WebSocket. Um, and then I just generate a, a, a random socket ID, which is also needed for a resync to know which client uh, subscribed or unsubscribed. And then same thing, you import resync to create an instance of it, and you consume the messages. Um, also have to pass the send method, bind it to the socket and all that. And now this client needs to register to a particular subject. So this is the registering uh, method, resync subscribe, actually not register subscribe, not that. So resync subscribe, you give the socket ID of this socket, uh, you tell which subject you want to subscribe to, that's the name that we gave it on the server. You also um, pass the send method, um, as well, so that you can receive the response. And this is your observer, just printing out the received value or error or would leave here. And that's it, that is the observer. Now you can do the same with the web. Um, when you run yarn on the web, you, sh you also have to run yarn build because these two files do not come in. Um, when you clone, there's no point. So when you run run build, yarn build, it all it does is browse verifies uh, the resynced code and the uh, observer code. So what does that look like for the web? Uh, if you if you compare these two, um, probably you won't see a difference because well there is no difference as you can see. They are identical. So the web client imports resync, creates an instance, consumes the message uh, on the on the message event listener, just like in the node client uh, on message event listener. Oh yeah, that was the difference. And and then it, it it subscribes to it. That is it. So what does that look like? So let's look at the observer HTML. Oh yeah, one one cool thing about um, WebStorm that I really like is that it can serve pages for you, so you don't have to have Nginx or, or Apache or whatnot, it can just serve a page this way. So let's look at the console. And there we go, it keeps getting the, the next message. And that's, that's basically it, having a subject on the server and um, <clears throat> different clients subscribing to it and, and receiving that message. Um, so before I, I go to show the the, um, the other direction, what you can do, uh, and let me um, kill this, what you can do is you can <clears throat> use different types of subjects. So, for example, you can use a replay subject here. Um, you can give it the buffer size if you want to, or not. So the server is restarting right now. Um, so if I don't pass the count, it's going to always replay all the messages. So if you see now, it started with zero, um, as it always does, and then just keeps adding messages. So when I subscribe here, I expect to see all these messages plus incoming new ones. So let's start it, let's say now, and boom, I got all the messages. Is it the same thing on the client? Well, let's take a look. So we serve the page, we open the console, and boom, it got all the messages. So we got the zero, Get to 14, 70, whatever it was, yeah, it's one. So it got all the messages, it keeps getting, getting. If I refresh, same thing, it gets all the messages, right? So that would be the, the replay subject. Um, you can also do a behavioral subject, which basically, oh, before I do that, let me uh, give like only five here. So if I, if I do that, cancel this. So the server started, this is the first message, second, 
Okay, so let's refresh this. It got all three, four. Refresh again, it got all five. So now it's got six. So the first one will be missed when I refresh. That's actually the first two, right? So it, got, it always gets only the five messages. And of course, same thing happens here. You only get the first five and then you keep getting more. So basically the replay subject works as expected. Um, you can also do the behavior subject. So let's do that properly. Kill this. Let's see what happens. So as you know, the behavior subject always enters the uh, requires requires a value right, to start, but uh, emits the current way of the subscriber uh, before it continues the next message. So what we're going to see here, we're going to see the client connected. And then we're going to see that the client gets the message before it connected to. So let's connect. Enter. And so you got 1701 is the first message, which is the message that happened before the client connected. Right. So let's do it here. Client connected, it was 2507 was the message before the client connected. And then the refresh, client disconnected. 4450 was the message before the client disconnected and connected again. And the client got that message. And that's basically how behavior subject works. Uh, you can also do the async subject. So let's do that. And let's also add like a, well, not like, well, let's add a, a timeout in five seconds. So let's do that. Let's kill this. We start it. Well, actually, storage. Let's uh, let's try this again. Let's increase to ten seconds. See what happens. So we keep this guy. I'm just going to go to refresh. All right. So let's start the server. Server started. No, it hasn't yet started. So now it started. So it's sending some messages. Let's. Registered. Um, interesting, this one received it. Oh, it completed. Was that, was that fast? Let me add a message here. Let me start the server. registered. I'm not receiving the completing message. There is the completing message and the value was received. And that's how async subject works. It just emits the last value on completion. So as you see, that worked as well. So let's show the other side of the equation. Let me do this. So we're back where we start. So what's the idea here? The idea here is to create a subject on the client this time and have the server subscribe to it. Um, since the server is running, it's, it's going to keep sending its messages, but nobody's subscribed to it, so yeah, nobody's going to continue. But um, the code on the client for for the subject for this with observable is identical. Uh, as, as it was on the server, it's just exactly as you would expect it to be. So we, we import resync, we create an instance, we have a subject, and we register that subject to resync, we add it to resync, we give it a ID, in this case, no JS client subject, because we can also create uh, the subject on the web as well. You can see that, we'll see that later. And we can zoom messages so that we can get the subscribe uh, events, we pass the socket send method onto the socket, 
And so what I, what, because this is the client, um, after the client has successfully registered to the server, which in this case is just giving the socket ID, um, I'm sending the server a message uh, saying, please observe me, and I'm telling it what the subject here is. And then on the server side, um, still, uh, you have the, the resynced instance uh, imported. This is not important for that demo. The consuming of messages is important because that's where you get the next and all those events. And so when the server receives the please observe me method, it just does the same thing as we did before on the client. It subscribes. It subscribes to that subject ID that it received uh, from the client and, you know, has the, the socket send method attached to it and it just basically this how it consumes the messages it just prints. So at the moment it's only sending. So let's start the client observable and see what happens. And there you go. So um, it received a, a please observe me message here. Um, and from then on it's receiving and also sending the messages. Now at the same time <clears throat> we can um, actually do multiple things. Let me open another client, as you probably would expect, of course. Before I open another client, let's look at the observable on, on the web. So let me serve that page. And you're going to now see, there you go, you see, your, the server is receiving messages from the web client subject and the node client subject. And of course, the observable code for the web is identical to the code you just saw for the node, resync instance, adding a subject, this time web client subject, and then consuming the subscribe events. And also on registers telling the server, please subscribe, please observe me, and this is my ID. Um, and so you can see the server is receiving Node.js and the web client messages. Um, what we can also do is we can observe. So this client is sending and this line is observing the messages. And we can also uh, observe on the web as well. A lot of things to show on the screen at once, but that way. So this one is receiving the server subject message. This one is sending the client messages. This web is uh, it's receiving the server subject messages and and this one is sending the web client subject messages and all of that is working as expected. Um, so there you have it. Uh, does this um, allow peer to peer? So can I subscribe with this, for example, client to these, uh, sorry, to these messages or vice versa. Can I can I subscribe with one client to the messages on another client? At the moment, no. Um, if I have time, I will probably add this later on. Or if somebody wishes to make a pull request, you're more than what more more than welcome to. Um, same thing goes for. <clears throat> I'm just going to kill everything. Same thing goes for, um, you know, reviewing the code um, or, you know, giving um, suggestions or critique. Um, everything is very much welcome. Um, feel free to rip it apart, um, make pull requests or file issues or just suggestions. And uh, if you build anything cool with this, um, like a chat uh, demo, which you can see would be relatively easy with this, just clients would subscribe to chat messages and just get them to the server. Um, or anything else, uh, please drop me a line. I would love to see it. And uh, yeah, thank you for taking the time to watch this demo. and. Uh, have a good day.